And it's time now for a look at the market action today in Korea and around the world. And for that, we're joined by Mr. Daniel Yu, global strategist at Kium Securities. Thanks for making time this afternoon. Thank you for having me. So we started the week off in positive territory pretty much across the board here, Wall Street, elsewhere. Uh, Mr. Yu, walk us through the action on the Korean markets today. We're seeing optimism on a revival in China's manufacturing. Yes. Uh, over the weekend and on Monday, the Chinese PMI numbers were released by the National Bureau of Statistics as well as Chaixin uh, Index. Uh, if you look at the number, that it came out at 50.5 from the National Bureau of Statistics of Manufacturing PMI, uh, which is much higher than the previous month of 49.2 and the market forecast of 49.6. Uh, also, the Chaixin uh, Manufacturing PMI, which looks at much more small and mid-cap companies, uh, and that number came in at 50.8, exceeding market expectation of uh, 50. Um, so, uh, all in all, it seems that the economy seems to be rebounding, uh, and that has resulted into a positive implications for most of the Asian countries, including Korea. Um, as far as the service PMI numbers, also it came in at 54.8, uh, which is slight increase from previous month of 54.3. So um, as the we've been worrying about China slowing down and economic growth rate slowing to below 6%, uh, that might have a negative impact on the Asian countries in general. That was the concern. But the actual numbers are coming through that the economy seems to be stabilizing, and that is affecting positively on Korea market. And Korea market has gone up on Monday as well as today. Uh, today, a little bit slightly less, but yesterday quite significantly over 1%. Yeah, investors clearly responding positively, positively to that. And stocks on Wall Street overnight, uh, they were up more than 1%, significantly more. Uh, again, there's the China manufacturing data, which is also lifting other markets in Asia. Yes, uh, if you look at the, uh, the PMI numbers, not just the Chinese numbers were coming in better than expected, but also the U.S. numbers were coming in at better than expected. The ISM manufacturing PMI in the U.S. rose to 55.3 in March uh, from 54.2, and the market expectation was only 54.5, so well above the expectations. Uh, it seems that there has been uh, faster increases on new orders, production, as well as employment. Uh, so the business confidence in the U.S. seems to be quite stable at this point in time. Uh, that has resulted into quite significant rally of the uh, U.S. market, uh, the Dow was up more than 1.27 percent. NASDAQ was up more than 1.29 percent. S&P was also up 1.16. Uh, that feed into quite significant rally yesterday of the Asian market uh, as the Chinese number as well as U.S. numbers are doing better. Uh, but as for the today, it seems that they're taking a little bit of a breather. Uh, Asian markets are rising a uh, little bit more, but nevertheless, the level of the rise seems to be a bit more less than uh, compared to the yesterday because there's been some continuation of the worries about China-U.S. trade talk agreement, whether that's going to be settled anytime soon. Yeah, that's one risk, and there are others too, obviously. Let's talk about Brexit. Uh, the House of Commons had uh, several options laid out for it, but again, rejected all four of them in the latest vote. Uh, they're going to vote again on Wednesday, though, U.K. time. What influence is that going to have on the markets? Right. If you look at just uh, if that deal does not go through and there's going to be no deal Brexit, uh, that could be definitely negative news for the market. However, though, uh, whether or not this Brexit is going to impact the market to the level where uh, European economy is going to undergo a recession, I think that's very unlikely case. Uh, already that 2018, the Stocks 50 European index was down 14.3% because of this concern of the uncertainties regarding to the Brexit, as well as the Italian budget issues and the French yellow vest demonstration issues and all that has affected quite negatively for the economy as a whole. But still, though, European economy is growing, not going into the negative territories in terms of growth rate. Uh, we're looking at 1.1% growth rate in the first quarter, but it is going to slightly pick up to mid 1% level. The reason for that is because uh, continuation of the very strong domestic economies of the European markets, uh, if the service sector as well as the unemployment ratio seems to be quite stable, and uh, retail sales seems to be fairly stable as well. 
Furthermore, European Central Bank is expected to come through with a more monetary easing uh, through TL, TLO uh, program, which will be lending more. So therefore, yes, the Brexit is a concern and it's going to take some time for it to settle. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, the level of the, the slowdown of the economy is not going to uh, the level of recession, recessionary territories. So if that's the case, uh, the European market is not going to drag down the global economy as a whole. All right, got it. And we'll know more uh, in the days to come. We'll have to leave it there, though. Daniel Yu from QM Securities, uh, thanks for your time this afternoon. Thank you very much.